Right now, it's time to talk to the most mysterious man in sports media. And that is Amazon best-selling author, Jameis, one of one. One of one, what's up, man? What's going on? Welcome back to the program. <laughs> I love the introduction. How you doing, brother? Uh, doing very well. Yeah, uh, that was a little surprise for me. I didn't even know that was coming. I'd be dying right now. Uh, speaking of... Dian, how are you feeling? Um, I, I don't, well, I mean, Dian may even have whatever. How are you feeling, man? When the news became official, what was your reaction, Jameis Winston? Uh, for those that don't know your history, if you're listening to Jameis One One for the first time, um, this is an anonymous being who has uh, been fighting what he calls uh, Jameis derangement syndrome in the media, where Jameis Winston is held to a bar that none others are and kind of viewed differently than other players that have done the same things, and his numbers back it up, et cetera, et cetera. He's written an entire book about it called Jameis Winston Derangement Syndrome, best-selling Amazon author. Um, so the number one Jameis truther out there. Uh, one of one, what was your reaction when Winston announced it became official he's re-signing with the New Orleans Saints? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I knew in advance. Um, and I was – honestly, I was a little disappointed with, like, how the news came out, the timing of everything. Um, Jeremy Fowler, you know, he was, he got the tip to go ahead and, and report it publicly, uh, from ESPN, which was fine. Um, but he, <laughs> he reported it after the Matt Ryan news broke. And mm. so everybody sort of, you know, I get, I get flooded with DMs and notifications, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's sort of like, well, you know, of course he had no other options because of the way the news came out first, Ryan, then Jameis. Okay. Anybody just with a little bit of common sense should realize that if Jameis, inst- like if the news comes out instantly, the deal's done. Here's the here's the uh, the numbers on it. Like it wasn't after the Matt Ryan deal that was already in the works, right? So that morning, uh, the the day that the Matt Ryan deal finally got done, that morning the Colts were sending out a jet for Jameis. Mm-hmm. Um, the, anyway, a really good article was written about it later by by Nick Underhill. So I'd, I'd suggest anybody go read it. Um, and it contains a lot of a lot of good details. There's a lot more that happened behind the scenes, but it's it's a good article regardless. But that morning, the Colts were sending out a jet to get Jameis. Like they wanted Jameis. Yeah. Jameis informed them, "No, I'm I'm sticking with New Orleans." They then made the deal for Matt Ryan, right? So the way the news broke, I didn't really like the timing of everything, um, because like honestly, right now there should be segments running on on you know the talking head shows. About okay, so Matt Ryan was a little upset that the Falcons wanted Deshaun Watson instead of him, so he goes to the Colts who wanted Jameis instead of him. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a fair point, man, and, that, and and that's not something honestly that you're hearing. And I see the article right now. We have Nick on every Tuesday, New Orleans uh, football, uh, an inside look at Jameis Winston's options in free agency. It is a little interesting timing there. Um, so, what do you think about the potential? Of Jameis in New Orleans, like w- w- when you look at last year's numbers, uh, I mean the most important number five and two as a starter, right? Great touchdown to pick ratio, great QB rating, the volume not what you would have wanted. I mean they didn't really take the governor off him. Right? I think he averaged about twenty passes a game, like hundred eighty something yards a game. Um, h- how do you feel he did in New Orleans, and what changes now going into this year when he is the guy? Well, yeah, I mean, I focus a lot on um, advanced metrics, I yeah. mean, even even in my book, right? So, like, some totals, counting stats and stuff like that, they, they don't impress me that much because, uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, it has a lot to do with volume, right? Or even game situation, if you're down big, if you're up big, et cetera. So, in looking at Jameis' numbers, I mean, if you look at, at the sum totals, I mean, why in the world would Peyton air it out against the Packers when they're just destroying them, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they put up 33 on Washington. They didn't need to air it out. They put up... 30 or, or you know, 28 plus two missed field goals on the, on the uh, Patriots. They didn't need to air it out. So when you're looking at the advanced metrics, though, the only quarterback in the entire NFL with a better EPA per play than Jameis was the MVP, Aaron Rodgers. That's it. Nobody, nobody mentions that. I mean, I've, I've been That's crazy because that's a stat that, like, all the analytic nerds tie their, 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 their everything to now is EPA. Explain exactly. it a little bit. It, 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 it's expected points added. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the, the stat guys love that stat. And, you know, there's some guys in the, in the New Orleans media that know the advanced metrics. I mean, Larry Holder wrote a whole article yeah. about Joe Burrow's advanced metrics, right? But I've been on him and, and others. Like, how come no one's mentioning this about Jameis? I did like, not know that, man. It's just ignored. He was, he was the only quarterback in the whole NFL better than him was the MVP, right? And then total QBR. That's another one. Everybody knows that stat. It's promoted like crazy. 
Jameis was fourth in the entire NFL. The only guys better were the MVP, Tom Brady, and Justin Herbert. That's it. So, <laughs> you know, and now Jameis is going into his, his third year in, in NOLA, right? Um, I had tweeted out a few days uh, before Jameis resigned, and, and actually a few days before, uh, I think two days before the Deshaun Watson news broke. I tweeted out a, uh, a painting, right? I mean, I've got a ton of images I could use and stuff like that. I tweeted out a painting, and it said, loyal to a fault. Right, and it was uh, it was of Jameis. Uh, it was done by a by a buddy of mine, and um, it said loyal to a fault. And one of my one of my followers said, "Why are you using that painting when he's in the number three? He doesn't wear number three. He wears number two in New Orleans." And I didn't say anything until the news broke, and then I was like, "Bro, you know I leave breadcrumbs with everything, right? I'm always leaving them for for people." I said, "This is Jameis's third year coming up in New Orleans. That's why I use the image." <laughs> wow. I, okay, I saw that, and I too was wondering what the number three was about. I was kind of hoping he was going to grab the cannon's number, but uh, all right, man. Okay, okay. So the breadcrumbs, if you're seeing between the lines, that's crazy about the QBR as well. I didn't know that. Um, now, Jake, you've been on the Jameis train yeah. here. What's your reaction when you hear those numbers right there? Well, and if you think about who he did it with, remember, no Michael Thomas last year. Mm. And so, look, no disrespect to the receivers they had out there, but you had some number three guys trying to be number ones. And at times they did a really nice job. But, I mean, even with the weapons they have coming back, and they still have question marks, one-on-one, like no, no question about it. But even getting a Michael Thomas back, you have to imagine – like James has to be excited about that, and, and and Callaway last year many times was his number one receiver. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, Jameis and Mike wanted to play together bad last year, right? It, mm -hmm. it just didn't work out. Mike's ankle didn't respond, and Jameis got hurt for the year. Mike shut it down for the year. It it just didn't work. But you know, there were a lot of a lot of reports and stuff. Mike Thomas will never play for the Saints again, and I was telling people he wants to play with Jameis. Like they want to play together. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very excited. Um, I was sad to see Armstead go. I yep. was sad to see Marcus rough. Williams go. And, you know, honestly, had they not dorked around with Deshaun Watson, they could have retained both those guys. Right? I mean, they're they're they've got a dead cap hit of thirteen million on Armstead for him not to play for the Michigan this yeah. year. And he he only got like what, fifteen up to seventeen and a half in Miami. So had they got a deal done, you know, with Jameis and Armstead beforehand, that's fifteen point nine million total dead cap that hits the cap this year that wouldn't have. They could have pushed it. So I mean, like that did hurt. There are there are consequences for that. I mean, I get it. Deshaun's an elite quarterback. I mean, I I've even personally invested in him, like in high card sports cards, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Deshaun's an elite quarterback, but you know there are consequences. And um and I had heard probably about two days before uh, the news to Cleveland broke, Deshaun was not going to New Orleans. Like he he wasn't going there. It was Atlanta all the way, and then at the last second he flipped it to Cleveland, and they they guaranteed all the money. But, like, I mean, I, I honestly, I don't think he was ever going to New Orleans. Mm. And so it is a little sad to see Teron and Marcus now gone. But, um, you know, the big thing is, you know, had they, even just Teron, had they re-signed Teron, you could use that 18 on, on a wide receiver. Now I don't know. Maybe they use it on the best offensive tackle on the board. Yeah. And that hurts. Because, I mean, if you pair Jameis with one of those boys from Ohio State or, you know, one of these really good wide receivers, I'm sorry, not pair Jameis, pair Michael Thomas with that, that changes the offense entirely. Yeah, and I mean, look, we, we, we talk about it all the time. Like, if Callaway can be a three, they can be a very good receiving core. And then Jameis and Deontay Hardy already proved, like, they can take the top off of a defense. So, is is are, are there any free agent wide receivers that you would like to see the Saints uh, go and pursue? I mean, I'd, I'd almost rather see them lock down a, an offensive tackle in free agency, even mm. if it's like an old one like Dwayne Brown, so they could, they could draft more of a project offensive tackle later in the draft and use that number 18 on a wide receiver. Um, I, I sort of feel like if they if they get a wide receiver in free agency, it's just more of a reason that they won't use 18 on a wide receiver. And, I, and I'd rather see like a legitimate star young gun than, than an old guy. I mean, I like OBJ, but I don't know about the health. I like Jarvis Landry. He, you know, he's more effective in the slot. Um, but, I mean, if a guy like Drake London falls to them and you pair him with Michael Thomas, how, how do you defend that? Drake London's a monster, right? And, I mean, even, even Chris Olave, who I, I view as more of a guy in that, say, 25 to 30 range, but even if they, if they got Olave at 18, I mean, that's a technician route runner. I think he'd work perfect with Michael Thomas. They already have kind of a chemistry going. Like, so I, I would rather see a receiver at 18 and, a, and an offensive tackle in free agency than the opposite. 
And then also you might have to take a look at running back because unfortunately we talked about it many times. Like Alvin Kamara obviously is, is someone that might miss games. And obviously like when you're a quarterback, you want to be able to turn around and hand it off to a guy that you trust and not maybe a young player who hasn't proven anything. So running back might have to be an option earlier in the draft just to give you another option there. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, I think Alvin was great for Jameis last year, even – even in games where you know he wasn't getting a lot of yards, and Alvin's yards per carry actually was kind of down last year, but just to know it's Alvin Kamara behind you, I, I think that helped a lot. I mean, Jameis is coming from a place where it was Peyton Barber behind him, right, or the ghost yeah. of Doug Martin. <laughs> like you know, having Alvin Kamara was a security blanket, even if he wasn't carrying the ball, even you know, even if his yards per carry was down. Um, so yeah, I mean, he he could. Who knows how many games he'll be suspended? You know, I mean, hopefully none, but it could be probably up to six. So, yeah. I could see him going running back, and there's there's always good running backs in the draft, right? I mean, and you can get him in later rounds, so I'm not too worried about that. Another guy out in free agency is Ronald Jones. Um, okay, yeah, that's you right. know, I know Jameis liked him in Tampa, and the kid's got a lot of talent. He'll, he'll fumble sometimes, and you know, he had some attitude with Arians and whatnot. Um, but he's got a lot of talent. He can, he can play. All right, last one here, one and one. How are you now? The, this is the other huge part of everything, right? The elephant in the room is Peyton out. Carmichael's still there. You obviously have close contact with the Jameis camp. How are they feeling about Peyton moving on and Carmichael being there? Oh, they. I mean, they love Pete, right? They okay. love Pete. Um, and the Dennis Allen hire was fine. I mean, there, there's no issue there. Um, you know, I think I think Dennis kind of wanted to step out of Peyton's shadow a little bit and 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 maybe get his his quarterback instead of you know continuing with Sean's. Um, you know, there were reports Sean's would have just stick with Jameis and not even made the offer to, to Watson. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, I can't I can't blame you know Dennis for taking a swing. Whatever. Uh, I don't think there's any trepidation whatsoever with the coaching staff, ownership, anything like that. Um, I think Jameis loves New Orleans and, and his teammates. Um, and you know, having Pete Carmichael for that third year, uh, Ronald Curry's still there. Um, you know, the offensive line maybe will be even better with Marone. So I, I think there's I think there's good things uh, in store. I think it would be cool to see, you know, somebody in the NFC loading up the way the AFC guys are. I mean, those AFC teams huh. are in an arms race. And, you know, had New Orleans been able to bring back Williams and Armstead and, and maybe even use the top first two picks in the draft on wide receivers, like they could have loaded up too. Um, they're being a little more conservative. But I think they have got a great shot at the playoffs. I don't view, you know, any of the teams in the NFC as, like, super legit other than maybe Tampa, who New Orleans has stomped the last four times they've played them in the regular season, and the Rams, right? So, yeah, I'm excited. Hell yeah, man. Uh, I can't wait. We'll definitely have you back on soon. There's still a ton more to break down with this story. Jameis, one of one, author of Jameis Winston Derangement Syndrome. How about that? Jameis, second in the NFL in EPA, fourth in total QBR, Pretty wild stuff there with no weapons whatsoever. One on one, thank you, man. Yeah, you guys have a great day. You have a good one as well. Uh, okay, dude, the EPA thing's big. Like that is what all the analytic nerds are obsessed with. So we'll see. Again, what happens when you take the governor off? That's 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 the question. We gonna see. Coming up next, let's close out the estimate.